you're featured in the reunited states and you do see these young people from different parties collaborating talking having really civil discourse so what's the magic how are you doing this yes well there are three pieces to that solution i think so one is it's tough to collaborate with anyone across the line of difference if you don't have a trusting bond and so building relationships is a key model of success the second is finding ideas that don't necessarily fit neatly into the left right paradigm but are more reframed as future versus the past and keep in mind when we as americans learn about issues whether it's climate change or criminal justice reform there is a specific interest in the media and major party leaders to frame these in partisan ways that make the other side always seem like the enemy or that they're evil. Two thirds of Americans today see the other side as being fundamentally evil, not just different. And so when you can identify these issues that cut across that grain, then that creates new opportunities. And it's important to mention, mention here that the style of bridge building that I've called for for the last 15 years and our whole movement is calling for is not one where you're just meeting on the 50 yard line where you have an A position and a B position and you divide by two. That doesn't always lead to good things. How do you divide by two on, say, civil rights issues? The key idea is that we're bringing people together to listen, learn and move to a new playing field altogether. And that's why I use music, jazz music in particular as a good metaphor. So it's not about a transactional thing. It's more of a transformative endeavor. And, um, and so I think that's important to realize that when people come to these bridging conversations, it's not about leaving your ideas or checking your identity at, at the door. Bringing your full lived experience is essential to build a strong bridge. So I think that gets lost often uh, in, in, in sort of the conversation about how we come together as American people. The third thing that's important here is to bring this conversation into the light, into the public. Narrative building is one of the most important things that Millennial Action Project and my new effort, Bridge Entertainment Labs, does. Because I can tell you that being behind the scenes with many elected officials, as well as some of the most prominent media personalities that you would see on CNN, they have extremely constructive, respectful conversations behind closed doors, behind the scenes, when the camera is not on. And then they go on cable news or they go on any kind of media platform and that tone changes. So what's really going on there? There are a lot of incentives, media, political and otherwise, which I'm happy to jump into, that is causing them to polarize as they go into the public limelight. But I think we have a responsibility to counter those narratives with stories where we do bridge a divide and get something real done. Because for the American public, they don't realize this game that's being played against us. They don't realize that a lot of the division we see on media is performative. And so therefore, we don't realize that there is a bridge to build, that there's someone to build a bridge to. So it's very important that we're elevating these narratives that we're able to change the culture of our country, because if not, people don't believe it's possible. So those are the three big things we, we like to do.